The goal is you're in the narcissist lives for the sole purpose to serve them. Do you ever feel like the last relationship you were in, the person didn't care about you? The person didn't understand you? The person didn't really think anything much of you? Like maybe they, maybe it felt good at the beginning, but then it seemed like you were just a commodity. Like you were someone in their life that made them look better, that made them feel better. Did you have that relationship where it just felt like you were getting used and abused in different aspects, whether that was because of your looks, because of your money, because of your knowledge, your education, because of your status, because of the family, because of the business you were in? Like, did it seem like that? Because a lot of times you'll find in toxic relationships, a person will try to get with another person to use them. And then as they progress in the relationship, they start realizing like, wait a second, there's actually not love. There's actually not care. There's actually not respect. There's just someone that's trying to use me. What I want to propose to you today and what I want to, what I want to talk about is that the narcissist, the, the sociopath, the psychopath, the toxic person, the person that's been in your life with that toxicity, the narcissist in your life thinks you're a toaster. And they expect you to perform every day just for them. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. Providing awareness to help people understand what narcissism is. Because hands down, we meet with people every single day that have gone through this stuff that are just finding out about it. That are just understanding of like, I never understood this. I wish I would have known this 10, 20 years ago. A lot of times we'll talk to people in clinicals or, or going through psychology or psychologists or therapists that are actually like, hey, I've learned about this in school, but I still got into a toxic relationship because it doesn't look the same in real life as it did just going through it a day in the, in the textbook. So awareness, growth, healing, and change is why Rob Motivations is here. If you haven't had a chance to be able to see the small nuggets of truth we drop every single day in other platforms, check out TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Follow under there, under Raw Motivations. We got the podcast under Raw Motivations. If you want to hear from the wife's perspective, a lot of people have been asking like, hey, when's your wife going to go live again? When she's going to communicate? Well, we weren't able to be able to put that on the schedule, but we were able to start doing podcasts. And so we've got a new, brand new podcast out called Trauma, Drama, and Life by Ben and Kayla Taylor. So feel free to be able to check that out on Apple Podcasts, Trauma, Drama, and Life. We're super excited to be able to have that up and just be able to share part of our lives, part of like an inside scoop, inside sliver on some of our past, but then also some of the stuff that we're going through in the present and trying to communicate and be open, honest, and vulnerable with you guys so you can actually see what's going on there. A lot of people want to hear perspective. If you're curious about that or if you want to you know, send in questions for us to be able to go through and talk through, uh, you can go to rawmotivations.com or you can just send me an email, ben at rawmotivations.com. We'd love to be able to hear from you to be able to help with that. If you want to work with me personally, or if you want to go through either some of the coaching to break free of the trial bond, work through the rumination phase and set up boundaries moving forward and be able to see that from a different perspective than what you've experienced before, we'd love to talk to you. Go to rawmotivations.com. Love to interact with you today. Okay. Anyways, let's dive in. So we know a lot of times narcissists, we talk about narcissists having, you know, they have high ego, they have grandiose, they have these fantasies, they have manipulation. You know, what we also see a lot of times almost like a God complex. And and I did a video recently about like how narcissists don't believe in God because of the aspect of I have to be the best. And the best means I have to be the best in the room. I have to be best in the relationship. I have to be the best in the job environment. I have to be best in the universe because I am. I am that person that is the best. And so a lot of times a narcissist will replace God or, or, or the biggest being in the universe kind of thing, like that idea, they'll replace any of that with themselves. And this breeds a lot of that entitlement piece, that entitlement piece that says, hey, I should get what I want. I should get the things that I need. I should get the things that I am entitled to. You see, a narcissist a lot of times thinks that they're the center of the universe and that people should honor them. People should respect them. People should worship them for stuff that they haven't done and for stuff that they're not good at. When I was in a regular regular job, I guess you could say, and I was working at Chick-fil-A. It was one of, the, one of the places that I worked at for 10 years. And I grew up in and learned a lot of stuff in that business. And I became really, really good at what I did. And as a result, a lot of that went to my head. And I was like, hey, I'm also really good at what I did. Don't, I mean, I was also, I also had that go to my head before I even, at, like, as I started the job. It wasn't like I learned it and then I got the ego. I had the ego when I walked in, you know, just asked my wife. She said I was a jerk. Um, so anyways, like, I, when working there, you know, I wanted people to see, hey, I've got all the answers. 
And so like people would come to me and be like, oh, like what's the problem to this? And I fix it in like two seconds and be like, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. I had the same thing with like technology. People walk up and be like, hey, like I can't this can't get this iPad to work and drive through and be like, boop, 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 here you go. And it always worked, like always. And so a lot of that, I was like, hey, like I'm the best person. Like you guys should respect me because I know what I'm doing better than any of you. I felt like, and I wanted to be the top dog. And as a result, that the idea was people are meant to serve me. They're meant to give me what I want, which is the opposite of what I should have been doing, which is the opposite of how I should have been leading in that environment and in a team setting. I wasn't leading with, with servant leadership. I wasn't leading to help inspire people or help motivate people or, or build buy-in to help create something bigger than myself because I wanted to be the biggest aspect there. You see, with narcissism, you have this giant section of entitlement that's, I want what I want, when I want it, don't expect anything else, just give me what I want. Sounds like a two-year-old, right? Like, I just want this. And when I don't get it, then I go somewhere else. A lot of times that's what narcissism looks like, boiled down really small. With entitlement, you have two main things that actually come under entitlement. You have gotten unreasonable expectations. I expect you to do what I want. So I expect you to give me access to all of your life while you have access to none of mine. I expect you to let me go through your phone anytime I want, even respond to your friends, even check out different things that you're talking to other people. I expect to be able to do that, but don't you dare touch my phone. I expect to control all the finances, but don't you dare ask me for money. I expect to be able to do all these things. Unreasonable expectations that narcissists put on other people because they expect that from the entitlement piece of you owe me. And the second thing, unreasonable expectations. The second thing is automatic compliance. So it's not just that you owe me. You owe me now. You owe me now. With the things I expect, I expect it done now. I expect it done yesterday. Like, I asked you to do this. You haven't even done it for me. Like, I expect you to show up in this way. Like, you haven't even got ready. Like, what is actually going on? You'll see the narcissist get super upset because that entitlement piece is so huge. Of I expect anything and I expect it now. Think of it this way. Say you say you come downstairs in the morning and you're getting ready to make breakfast and you go to pull the toaster out and plug it in and get it ready. And you go to grab a piece of bread and stick it in the toaster. And as you get ready, you turn to the toaster and the toaster looks right back at you and says, no, I'm not toasting your toast today. And you'd be like, okay, one, you'd probably feel crazy because the toaster's not supposed to talk, right? But then two, you'd be like, what the heck? Like you're, this is your designed function. Like you're not here as a blender. You're not here as a refrigerator. Like you're literally sitting on my counter as a toaster to toast my bread for breakfast. That a lot of times is how the narcissist is actually viewing you when you don't automatically comply with their expectations. You see, a narcissist thinks that you're an appliance to serve them. You're an appliance that's put into their life to be able to serve them and to make them feel better about themselves, to make them look better about themselves, to make them think better about themselves, whatever it might be. The goal is you're in the narcissist's lives for the sole purpose to serve them. A lot of times when you don't work, when you don't perform how they want, then that's when they devalue and they discard you. The thing is the narcissist will get super upset when they put the toast in and they, and they turn the knob, knob up too high and all of a sudden the toast comes out burnt because they're upset with the actions that they've done. They're upset with what has been produced by what they have done. A lot of times when a narcissist pours into your life all the mean things, all the abuse, all the awful things, they're upset of like, why are you not like producing what I want? I'm supposed to get exactly what I want regardless of how I treat you. They expect that automatic compliance and the unreasonable expectations to still give them the stuff that they want every single time. Maybe some of you are like, okay, well, I'll just be, I'll just be a toaster that just sits there and I'll just hope they don't, that they don't notice me. I'll just be silent. I'll just kind of like gray rock them with the toaster. But the problem is a lot of times they'll still notice. And you won't actually grow, heal, and change because you're still stuck in that area. A lot of times you might think, hey, I'll just sit there and I'll just not respond. No, go no contact. I won't reach out, but I'll, I'll not respond. A lot of times people think, hey, hey, no contact, but they don't actually block and keep the door shut. They're still getting activated by trauma every single day as they interact with that person. So you want to be that sassy toaster that actually takes back their power, says no. What you have to do is you have to leave. 
You have to get out of a toxic environment and focus on taking back your power, healing, growing, and changing, and not being around the person that expects you to comply with their unreasonable demands. Because the narcissist is looking and is viewing you as being a toaster, as being an appliance that is meant to serve them. What I want to tell you today is stop being an appliance that's only used to warm up a narcissist's life and start to take back your control. And it's not done by just being there. It's not done by just sitting there. It's not by, done by just ignoring them. What it's done by is taking back your power and actually controlling the situation that you're in, setting up a boundary that says, hey, I'm no longer going to be used and abused in this way. I'm going to remove myself from the situation, from the house, from the state, from the country, whatever it is, to take back my control, to make sure that I am healing, growing, and changing, and I'm getting into an environment that is emotionally, mentally, and physically safe for me to do so. I encourage you to do that today. Last thing, you're not crazy. You're not alone. You're not hopeless. If you feel like that, or if any of those things are bothering you, reach out for help today because we want to be able to help you heal, grow, and change in all those different areas.